Hello everyone. A little while ago someone wrote me an email uh, from my website and they asked me what I thought was the best reason to reject the Trinity. The main argument against the Trinity. What's your best reason for rejecting that doctrine? And I had to pause for a bit because no one had ever asked me that question before. I mean, I had the answer. I didn't have to hesitate in my mind to know what my answer was going to be. But what I've noticed over the past several years is that people are very different when it comes to this question. Um, what seems to impress one person or impact one person is really different than the next and I'm not sure why. Um, some people have some pretty wacky reasons for believing in the Trinity. Some people even have some pretty wacky reasons for rejecting it. And these reasons are all over the map. And so I don't spend a lot of time thinking about, you know, what I think is the best reason. I know what I feel is the best reason for rejecting the Trinity. So that's what this video is about. And this is the answer I provided. It was a little shorter answer than the one I'm going to give you here. But for me, there, there's nothing more decisive than this. Nothing. And that's because I trust Jesus. And there is no more reliable witness than Jesus Christ. There's no more trustworthy witness than Jesus Christ for me. I trust no one more than this, on this matter, than Jesus. And so, when I want to find out who the true God is by identity, three person or one and all that I go to the testimony of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and Jesus does reveal this to us in fact we're told in the scriptures that the very reason Jesus came was so that we might have understanding and so that we might know the true God and Jesus Christ who he sent. That's a fact. We're told this at 1 John 5.20. We're told this at John 1.18. Jesus declares or expresses the God that no one has ever seen. And that's the reason he came. So Jesus is our main witness here. He's our most trustworthy witness. He's our most reliable witness. So we start with a fact. Jesus came to reveal the only true God to us so that we might have understanding and we might know the true God. Jesus was a Jew born under the law. And this is a very important fact. And the reason it's a very important fact is because, because Jesus, having been born under the law, means he had to obey the law. He was an Israelite. He was a Jew. And God gave the law to Israel. And having been born under the law meant he had to obey it. He was required to observe the law to know what those commands meant and to obey those commands. And I think we can trust that Jesus know what, knew what those commands meant. So we have another fact. Fact one, Jesus came to reveal the true God to us. Fact two, Jesus, a Jew, was required to obey the law. Jesus testified concerning the law. 
he told us in the scriptures what he considered to be the number one commandment, the foremost commandment of the law, the Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your strength. And Jesus um, says this in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 12, starting at verse 28. And I'm just going to read that here for you. And in this account, he has an agreeable discussion with a Jewish scribe. That didn't happen too often in the Gospels. But this one, this time, Jesus and this Jewish scribe wholeheartedly agree with each other. So I'm going to read that for you here. Mark 12, 28. One of the scribes came and heard them arguing, and recognizing that he had answered them well, asked him, What commandment is the foremost of all? Jesus answered, The foremost is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second commandment is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Then the scribe responds, and he said to him, You are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one, and there is no one else besides him. And to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding and with all the strength and to love one na one's neighbor as himself is much more than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. And Jesus' response here is very important. When Jesus saw that he had answered him wisely or intelligently, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. So here we have a very agreeable discussion between Jesus and a Jewish scribe about the foremost commandment of the law, the Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. So fact number three, the Shema is the foremost commandment of the law which Jesus was required to obey. During this discussion, something else is revealed to us. At least part of the, uh, part of the answer. Because this question of the Trinity and the true identity of God um, heavily revolves around what the Shema means. What does the Lord our God, the Lord is one, mean? And all of the answer is really here um, in this passage, um, but we'll see how Trinitarians don't want to buy that, and so we need to f we need to uh, validate that answer further, and we will. When Jesus tells the scribe what he considers to be the foremost commandment of the law, the scribe responds. And he says, you have truly stated that he is one. And there is no other or no one else besides him. You see that? And Jesus responds that he had answered him intelligently. In other words, the scribe is right. Now think about what the scribe said here. You are right, teacher. He is one, and there is no other but he. They're telling you right here what the Shema means. It doesn't mean the Lord our God, the Lord is one. What? The Lord our God, the Lord is one. Who? There is no other but he. They're qualifying Jesus and this scribe are agreeably qualifying what the Shema means. It means the Lord our God, the Lord is one. 
He. Not one what, one who. And so the Trinitarian claim that this means one unity of a divine nature is out the window, because a divine nature is a what, not a he. So we have another fact. We have another fact from Jesus, Jesus' own testimony, our most reliable witness. And that fact is, that the Shema refers to one identity, and the words, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, mean the, mean the Lord is one, He. Now the implications there should be immediately obvious to anyone, that when the very purpose of singular personal pronouns is to signify a single person is in view. That's the point of personal pronouns. That's why we use them. The Lord is one He. Okay, one person. It tells you that right there. But for Trinitarians, that's not good enough. They're always trying to slip and slide. And so their answer is, well, He's one being, not one person. As if, you know, the Bible makes that distinction. Um, it doesn't. But that's the way they want it. But the answer is there in the scriptures, what Jesus means by that one he. The answer is there, if you just look. And it's not the triune being. Jesus testified to the specific identity, the specific identity of that one he, by how he obeyed that command of the law, the Shema. Who is this one He? Do you really think Jesus thought this one He was a triune God? Was Jesus a Trinitarian? As a Jew under the law, Jesus was required to be, obey the law. He also considered the Shema to be the foremost commandment of that law. In order to obey that commandment, he had to know what those words meant, didn't he? He needed to interpret the Shema in order to obey it. And Jesus testifies to us how he interpreted those words of the Shema, by how he obeyed it. He obeyed that commandment by serving, by worshipping only one person as his only God, his Father. He obeyed this commandment by recognizing only his Father, as his God. He obeyed the Shema commandment by loving his Father with all his heart, with all his soul, with all his strength. Not loving a triune God with all your heart and all your soul and all your strength, as Trinitarians interpret the Shema, but to love his Father with all his heart and all his soul and all his strength. And the fact that Jesus recognized only his Father only his Father, as his one and only God, shows us exactly how he interpreted the words of the Shema. He interpreted those words as referring to only his Father. How do we know that? Because that's what he did. That's what he did. He recognized only his Father as his God, and he only loved his Father as his God in terms of loving him with all his heart and all his soul and all his strength. And so we can also clearly identify specifically who that one he is when Jesus and the scribe are talking about the Shema. There is no other but he. It's Jesus' Father. They know that the Shema means the Lord our God, the Lord is one He. And Jesus shows us who that one He is by who He obeyed. By how He obeyed that commandment. It's obvious. The Shema means the Lord is one single He, and Jesus recognized that one single He to be His Father alone. His Father alone. 
Jesus did not sin. Did he? He was obedient to the law in every respect. We cannot suppose and play games in our head that he interpreted that secretly interpreted the Shema one way to refer to three persons, but he actually did something else, and he obeyed it as if it only referred to one. Because if he did do that, he didn't really obey it. He disobeyed the Shema. The Shema instructed him to recognize his God, who his God is, and to love his God with all his heart and all his soul and all his mind. How did he do that? By serving and worshipping only his Father, his Father alone. He didn't believe it meant one thing, and then he did another. That would make him a liar. It would make him a disobedient liar. And we know that Jesus is not a disobedient liar. No, he is our most reliable and trustworthy witness as to this question. But the Trinitarian dogma turns Jesus into a disobedient liar. Someone who interprets the Shema one way, but does another. He doesn't obey what he thinks it means. He does something else. Right? If you think about it, that's what the Trinity doctrine implies. That's the implications of that doctrine. But because he did not sin, we can be certain, absolutely certain, that what Jesus, whatever Jesus did, to interpret, to understand, to obey and observe this commandment is what it was intended to mean. Right? Jesus' understanding of the Shema and his obedience to it must match or else he was a disobedient liar. Do you want to believe that or do you want to trust Jesus? That brings us to six facts. And this one is Jesus' obedience to the Shema, the foremost commandment, shows us clearly what it really means and precisely who the Shema is identifying, his Father alone. And there's one more thing. Not really Jesus' testimony, but what Jesus did. Sort of Jesus' testimony. The revelation God gave to Jesus to give to John to show to his servants in the book of Revelation. It's really still Jesus' testimony. He has made us priests and kings to the triune God. He has made us priests and kings to his God and Father. You're being told right there, right there who you are to serve as your God, your priests to his God. Is his God a three-person being? No siree. His Father alone, the one he identified in the Shema, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, the one he identified as one single he, the one that he identified as one single he, and he obeyed it in that manner, his Father alone. If you honestly and reasonably consider all these facts, there's no escaping two things. The Trinity dogma turns Jesus into a disobedient liar. Someone who interprets the Shema like they do, but he does something else. Jesus secretly knows the Shema means the Lord our God, the Lord is one unity of three persons or whatever. And it means to love the Trinity with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind, but he didn't obey it that way. Really? Then he didn't obey it at all, did he? And you might say he couldn't obey it all. Exactly. It's an impossibility. It shows you your doctrine is an impossibility if you're a Trinitarian. And it shows us one other thing. 
It only shows us that the Trinity dogma makes Jesus to turn out, turn out to be a disobedient liar. It shows us something else. Jesus' testimony is reliable and trustworthy. And it shows us precisely, specifically, unambiguously, clearly, and most certainly, who the true God is by identity. The Father alone, period. Because that's how he obeyed the foremost commandment of the law. God bless you.